We have Myra Diaz del Olmo Oliveira, who is the ITA Sustainability Standards Manager. Uh, Myra is an environmental engineer, has worked in various roles across sustainability and environmental compliance uh, before joining ITA to lead our TIN code, which is our ESG standard. So, I'll hand over to Myra. Um, hi, everyone. Um, well, yeah, final presentation of the day. Very exciting topic, sustainability. Um, well, I think just to, uh, before starting, I, I feel very excited when I talk about or hearing about um, sustainable mining. So I've been working in mining, including exploration projects since I started working. So hearing uh, more about what all these projects and companies are doing related to ESG is very interesting and I really appreciate that. So. So yes, yeah, so um, I'm just going to introduce you to our ESG um, standard and reporting tool, which is the TIN code. Um, some of you are familiar with it, some of you are not, but um, yeah. So just to start, maybe I won't, I'm going to start with um, talking about representing our members and companies that are already reporting the TIN code. These are um, 12 companies that are um, based just around the globe, like so we have some companies that are already reporting from South America, Africa, Europe, um, Oceania, the Pacific area. So yeah, these are major um, team producers, so they report as part of their membership, so you can find also the reports in our website. But just more about the team code. So what makes us or the TIN code different compared with any other ease year sustainability standards because I think that as many of you are aware, there are some other um, ease year sustainability standards um, well, related to for, for mining, for the mining industry. So we started um, working on the TIN code was launched in 2018. So we have been promoting ESG disclosure, ESG performance disclosure, um, since 2018 with um, our members or the companies who started reporting the TIN code and we have um, five years working on, on this matter. Um, something about the TIN code is that this is a standard tailored for the TIN industry and it takes account um, companies of all sizes and also, um, yeah, we this is not, for example, if you compare it with any other sustainability standard, um, this, our TIN code, um, considers and takes into account expectations related to the TIN industry properly. So, yeah, I, I think that I like to use analogies. So, for example, if you're seeking for advice or if you just want to improve into certain areas, like, would you go to a general practitioner, to the GP, let's say here in the UK, or would you go to seek for advice um, for improvement to you look for an expert, right? So we are the experts in the or the teen industry. Um, all our reports are focused in progressive improvement and they include a progressive approach. So this is very interesting because there are other standards that maybe um, include only a few um, performance ratings, let's say for example, they failed or they passed um, they meet the expectations, they don't meet the expectations, but in this case for the teen code, we have six progressive ratings, um, which range, for example, from inadequate um, up to conforming or third party verified, which is something that it's very interesting and I like from um, the teen code and our standard. Um, an independent external assessor reviews the evidence and also reviews the self-assessment questionnaires provided by companies and he validates the performance and he validates the final ratings, um, which makes our reports more credible and transparent in a way. And the TIN code is also an informative report. Um, we include additional information. If you check our reports that are available online, um, you can find additional information on the efforts or the things that companies are doing and are already making. So we try to provide as much information, um, which is something that is for interest for investors already here in the room, maybe other stakeholders, maybe some other companies, other standard setters. So um, 
yet, you can find our teen code reports online on our website. This is how our standard looks. So we have 71 standards um, included or grouped under 10, 10 principles, which cover a wide variety of ESG or sustainability matters. So something that I like to say is that um, the Teen Code is more a sustainability standard because it is focused on broader expectations rather than ESG properly or, um, well, just ticking a box. Um, for example, something that I like and it's very interesting about the Teen Code is that it also tries to influence um, suppliers. So we expect from the companies reporting the Teen Code that they also influence positively their suppliers. So the impact of the Teen Code is not only focused on these companies, so it also transcends and go um, to the supply chain. Um, well, we cover... Um, the usual ones are the general ESG topics, environmental, social, governance, um, labor practices, like we just try to encourage a positive impact on all these aspects. And also um, it is well placed to also like um, provide pro progress um, towards, sustain towards the sustainable development goals. We're also expanding the team code. So um, since this year, companies or E&D e members um, can start reporting the team code. Um, there are already um, miners and smelters and recyclers that are already reporting the team code. So from this year, explorers and developers. How is that the team code works? So we start collecting evidence companies um, complete a self-assessment questionnaire, then this evidence and the self-assessment questionnaire is validated by our independent external assessor who determines one of the six ratings of the six progressive ratings that we have, or you can see um, on the slide, we have um, ratings ranging from third party verified, conforming, progressing, informal, inadequate, and not relevant. Then after the independent external assessor produce, um, determine the ratings, we produce a team code report that we, public, uh, we publish on our website. And then we also provide a gap um, analysis report just to um, finish or, um, with this cycle of progressive improvement or encourage progressive improvement. So um, these companies can also apply measures to improve and this completes the cycle for progressive improvement that we tried with, or that's the final aim of the team code. This year also we started, we started rolling out um, a new program that is the team code independent assurance. So this completes the full cycle for the team code. We are already providing um, assessment or validation of the ratings, but we're also um, providing um, independent team code assurance. So this, this program or the assurance consists or uses the ISA 3000 approach um, through this an auditor uh, verifies a company report um, and then just checks or verifies the truthness or accuracy of the content of these reports. And um, then after that is that, um, well, companies might be able to reach a rating of third party verified or not. So, well, this just completes the cycle. And it's also like, um, this comes because there is also more pressure um, or more discussion about um, the assurance or auditing in Europe. So this comes, or this is started related to responsible sourcing, but we're also, um, rolling out and implementing this um, assurance for any standard of the TIN code. So companies might be able to just do um, or request assurance or third party verification for any of the 71 standards. Um, we, registered, um, we registered audit firms and we check also the qualifications of the auditors that are um, registered here for the TIN code. 
This also comes because there are increasing expectations in Europe or discussions about the qualifications of the auditors, who is doing the, who is performing these audits, um, also the quality of the reports itself. So we try, uh, we try to include all these new expectations in this um, system and in the team code. So, um, just more information about how is that the team code works for the E and D group. Um, so, companies can decide if they uh, if they report for one one mine site or one project or multiple projects. This is completely voluntary. So, a company might decide one year to do the team code, and then the following one, yes, not to do it. Um, so, companies decide. Um, we start, um, or companies start by completing a self-assessment questionnaire. Um, then they send back to us um, the self-assessment questionnaire completed. Um, it is reviewed by the independent external assessor. And then we also provide guidance in terms of um, examples of evidence that companies can submit. And, and at the end of the process, we also um, provide a gap analysis report so companies can maybe just note what are the things that are missing, maybe some gaps, and also improve. Well, as I mentioned before, our team code reports, um, you have an example there, um, are available on our international teen association website, but we're also working and developing a new teen code website, and in the future you can find all the reports available there. You don't need to register. You don't need to provide any kind of information. Yes, everyone um, can download these reports online. Team code reports are also used in some market platforms, in this case for us, for the LME um, passport. So we have an example there. This is part of the sustainability credentials of some of the companies. Um, Yep, companies just, we just can check this information online if you um, register or log into the LME platform. And we are continuously working and engaging with some other organizations to um, drive harmonized standards for the teen code industry, but also like to discuss any other kind of sustainability matter and topic. And just um, to finalize on um, some final notes or keynotes. Um, well, the tin code is the standard um, tailored to the tin industry. It was developed also with feedback and considering expectations from potential customers uh, for the E&D group. It is already used and supported by major tin suppliers. And well, companies or E&D uh, companies have the opportunity to be seen as industry leaders on ESG and sustainability through the tin code. And that's it. Thank you very much. If you are interested in discussing more about the tin code or any kind of other kind of sustainability um, thing, we are just here in the room. Thank you.